Hi, I'm Matt Gordon, and this is Getting Started with Micrim OS. In our last episode, we covered the first three out of the four resource protection mechanisms supported by Micrim OS. Today, we'll examine the fourth method, mutual exclusion semaphores, or mutexes. What's the difference between a semaphore and a mutex in Micrim OS? From an application's point of view, these two kernel objects have much in common. They are both manipulated through pinned and post functions that involve the kernel scheduler. A mutex pinned, just like a semaphore pinned, has the potential to move the task performing the operation into a waiting state. And a mutex post is similar to a semaphore post in that both can make a pending task ready. However, there are a few key differences between semaphores and mutexes. One is that mutexes are binary. This means that the mutex equivalent of the semaphore counter is really more of a state variable, indicating either that a resource is available or unavailable. Another important difference is that mutexes have built-in protection for a critical problem that can happen if you use semaphores for resource protection. And that problem is priority inversion. A detailed explanation of priority inversion is beyond the scope of this series. But the basic idea is that priority inversion occurs when a low priority task prevents one of its high priority counterparts from running. When you're using mutexes in your application, the Micrim OS kernel takes steps to mitigate this problem. How? The kernel can temporarily increase the priority of a task that has performed a mutex pinned operation. This priority adjustment takes place entirely behind the scenes. It helps to ensure that the task will complete its pin, and it allows other tasks safe access to its resources. These are the three API functions that you're likely to encounter most often when working with mutexes. They are OS mutex create, OS mutex pinned, and OS mutex post. They closely resemble the three semaphore functions that we discussed in our last episode. Rather than enumerate the many similarities between them, let's examine their differences. The first involves data types. Semaphores are implemented using a data structure of type OS sim. With mutexes, the concept is the same but the data structure is a different type, OS mutex. For each mutex you create in your application, you must declare an OS mutex structure. And then you must initialize the structure using OS mutex create. Likewise, when you invoke OS mutex pinned or OS mutex post, you provide a reference to the initialized OS mutex structure. The second difference between the prototypes for semaphores and mutexes involves the create function. Recall that when you create a semaphore, your application can specify an initial value for the semaphore's counter. But the mutex create function doesn't accept an initial counter value as an argument. The reason for this is that the mutex is a binary kernel object, which is dedicated to resource protection. It has only two states, either the protected resource is available or it's not. OS mutex create automatically sets the value to available since in most cases, a shared resource is initially available. Under the hood, there are a few more differences between semaphores and mutexes. Mostly, these involve the mutex's built-in defenses against priority inversion. To use mutexes effectively, though, you don't need to be an expert on these implementation-level details. Let's now take a look at an example that shows how our three mutex functions could be employed in the protection of a shared resource. Here, we have two tasks. One of these tasks is responsible for reading pressure values from sensors and then writing the values to an SD card. The second task has the job of reporting various types of error conditions, also to the SD card. In between the circles representing the tasks and the ISR are a couple of symbols. The one shaped like a key indicates the mutex. The hourglass symbol indicates that there is a timeout associated with the mutex. Since the SD card is needed by both tasks, it is a shared resource. And we'll see how the tasks might use a mutex to protect this resource. In this pseudocode snippet, you can see the initial declaration required for the mutex. It's an OS mutex structure, and the name given to it is app mutex SD. The OS mutex structure must be initialized before any pins or posts can take place. The initialization is accomplished via OS mutex create. And after initialization, the mutex is in the available state. Below the initialization code are two tasks that will make use of the mutex. The first task is responsible for recording pressure values, and the second records any errors. Let's look at the pressure task. In its first line, the task obtains the pressure data. It is then ready to write that data to the SD card. However, before the write, it makes a call to OS mutex pinned in order to gain exclusive access to the card. Suppose the card is not currently in use by the error task. 
In that case, the mutex would be in the available state, and the pin function would return in short order. The task could then begin writing to the card. However, if the error task happens to be in the process of accessing the card following a pinned of its own, the mutex would be unavailable, and the pressure task would be forced to wait. The error task would have to issue a post to bring the pressure task out of the waiting state. Following the OS mutex pin call, there's a line of pseudocode that writes the newly read pressure values to the SD card. This is the portion of the task that accesses the shared resource. Of course, this portion of the task could consist of much more than a single line of code. Because of the pinned operation, any subsequent code in the task would be guaranteed exclusive access to the card. The pressure task ultimately gives up its exclusive access to the SD card by making a call to OS mutex post. If the error task were already waiting on the mutex, then the post function would make the error task ready to run. Otherwise, the function would simply move the mutex into the available state. The error task, for its part, gains access to the SD card via pinned and post calls that are practically identical to those we've just seen. As we see here, the task begins by checking for error conditions. After doing so, the error task pins on the mutex to gain exclusive access to the SD card. It writes the error conditions to the card and then posts the mutex to make the card available again. Of course, the pseudocode here is fairly simplistic. In a real application, both the error task and the pressure task would need to incorporate time delay calls or some other mechanism for yielding the CPU. This may seem a bit counterintuitive since the mutex pin function, as we have seen, is capable of making tasks wait. So why the need for a delay call? Well, with a mutex, a transition to the wait state occurs only when the underlying resource is unavailable. In our example application, the card would always be available to at least one of the tasks. So there would never be an instance of both tasks simultaneously waiting. But suppose the example application contained additional, lower priority tasks. In this application, those tasks would never get a chance to run at all. A delay mechanism would open up a window for the other tasks. So, to sum up what we covered today, mutexes are a type of semaphore reserved exclusively for resource protection. One of the major advantages of mutexes over semaphores is that mutexes can prevent priority inversions. Like semaphores, mutexes are manipulated with pend and post functions. A task can pin to gain access to a resource protected by a mutex, and it can post to give up the resource. In our next episode, we'll continue to discuss the kernel services that MicroM OS provides that allow for task interaction. We'll look at intertask communication and message queues. See you next time.